This fetus will eventually reach 200 pounds before birth. This idea could go from science fiction to reality. A team of scientists aim to genetically resurrect a woolly mammoth by 2027. Do you know who I miss? Woolly mammoths. Bring back woolly mammoths. <laughs> woolly mammoths have been extinct for about 10,000 years, but as Dr. Ian McCallum warns, life finds a way. Mammoths are back. Almost. But the really crazy part is that we're bringing them back to save planet Earth from us. Maybe. Admit it, you want to see a dinosaur. Everybody wants to see dinosaurs. Why else would there be so many Jurassic Park sequels? It's not for the human drama. We have an attraction. That's not what you said the last time I saw you. I'm talking about the dinosaurs. Hell, if I had my way, I'd ride a Triceratops down Fifth Avenue every morning in a purple robe with gold crescent moons, tossing salt taffy to gleeful children who clapped their little hands in delight. Well, bad news, <gasps> dinosaurs are probably never coming back. <sighs> After millions of years, their DNA has broken down to the point where we can't read it, let alone use it to make dino clones. So we're probably shit out of luck there. That is one big pile of shit. Mammoths, however, disappeared just 4,000 years ago. And a new company called Colossal aims to bring them back in as little as four years. This is their chief scientist, George Church. No relation to this guy. Hey, we were saving that. But today, I guarantee it. The big plan is to genetically modify DNA from Asian elephants, which apparently share 99.6% of a mammoth's genetic makeup. So, not exactly mammoths. They'd be something new, with mammoth traits. Flubber buddy pachyderms with thick, woolly hair and high domed skulls. I mean, it's kinda like, uh... Imagine being trapped in Siberian Sesame Street. Investors have already ponied up $15 million to make this happen. The process couldn't be easier. You just harvest an elephant egg, something no one's ever done before, replace 60 or more elephant genes with mammoth genes, create an artificial womb strong enough to hold an up to 200 pound mammoth fetus for two years, and before you know it, you've got a designer mammoth. The next step is to ship them off to Pleistocene Park, which, yes, already exists, and is located, of course, in Russia, where Vladimir Putin, after he steps down as Russia's president, simply must serve as park ranger. Actually, that part is not realistic. Because, as we all know, Putin will be the Russian president forever. Mammoths, or quasi-mammoths, are possible thanks to a technology Colossal's chief brainiac helped invent. It's called CRISPR-Cas9, and it lets scientists edit genetic info. It's like using find and replace on a Word doc, except for DNA. Basically, you search for specific genes and scissor-like enzymes snip them out. Scientists can then edit or delete the remaining DNA. Now, I know what you're thinking. Gene scissors, awesome. Mammoths, even awesomer. But how can I make this about me? And the answer is yes. There are laws against using this technology to create designer humans, or perhaps the close to humans that used to kick it with the mammoths. I'm looking at you, Encino man. A few years ago, Colossal's Dr. George Church set off a controversy when he was incorrectly reported to be searching for a woman to play surrogate mother to a baby Neanderthal. He clarified, I'm certainly not advocating it. I'm saying if it is technically possible someday, we need to start talking about it today. Not everyone has been so circumspect. This guy, Dr. Hu Jingkui, was sentenced to three years in prison by a Chinese court after he announced that he used CRISPR-Cas9 to engineer three genetically edited babies supposed to be immune to their parents' HIV. Josiah Zayner, a former NASA biochemist and self-styled biohacker, injected himself with CRISPR in an attempt to give himself genetically bigger muscles. He did it the way any responsible scientist would, live on the internet. 
and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this technology. Zayner also attempted to change his own microbiome by executing a fecal transplant on himself. That's right, poop pills. <sighs> YOLO. He later said, Honestly, I would never put me in charge of running this stuff for the FDA or the government. Nobody would do that. The FDA is one thing, I wouldn't let this guy make me a sandwich. The moral quandaries involved with this incredibly powerful technology don't stop with mammoths, Neanderthals, or medical use turd edibles. Because if the mammoth tech works, then there are plenty of other lost species that might be super cool to bring back. The majestic dodo, the passenger pigeon, once America's most common bird. Now, obviously, not so common. The half-ton, 10-foot-tall elephant bird, AKA the ostrich of doom. The Labrador duck, which, unfortunately, is not what it sounds like. The giant sloth, which, terrifyingly, is exactly what it sounds like. The bulldog rat, which, no matter what science says about them being extinct, I say, there are still a lot of these in Canarsie. And the saber-toothed tiger, which, according to the laws of 1990s television, means we finally defeat Lord Zed. <laughs> These are all potential candidates for what's called de-extinction, a movement that promises to bring back our departed animal friends. De-extinction is already real, sort of. The last natural Pyrenean ibex was killed by a falling tree in the year 2000, but scientists saved a part of her ear. So they cloned her and implanted embryos inside a goat. A new Pyrenean ibex was born in 2003, reviving the extinct species for roughly 10 minutes, after which the baby ibex died, making this the only species to ever go extinct twice. Oof. Scientists aren't bringing mammoths back just for funsies, or to fulfill anybody's childhood dream of riding one down the main drag of Novosibirsk. These mammoths have a special mission. We're bringing them back to defuse a bomb. The bomb, naturally, is in Russia. But I don't mean this. I'm talking about a dirty bomb, literally. A frozen, dirt, explodey melty thing, otherwise known as permafrost. The frozen Arctic soil estimated to hold more than four times as much carbon as all the CO2 ever produced by modern humans, which is okay, totally fine, and not a problem at all, so long as it stays in the ground. But thanks to climate change, that ice dirt is melting which means a shit ton of greenhouse gas could soon hit the atmosphere and make climate change suddenly, dramatically, much less okay. There's already so much methane seeping up in Alaska, you can do this. Whoa! The big melt could release viruses long thought to be under control, like the bubonic plague and the 1918 flu and even bizarre ancient viruses humans had never seen before. Scientists think that's what caused an anthrax outbreak in Russia's Yamal Peninsula, which sent roughly 100 people to the hospital and prompted officials to burn thousands of reindeer. Take that, Santa. The permafrost is melting so fast, it's creating a brisk trade in ancient mammoth tusks popping out of the unfreezing ground. Because this is where mammoths once helped keep the permafrost permafrozen. They did it by trampling snow, effectively clearing off a layer of insulation that traps heat underground. They knocked down trees, which kept this region a grassland instead of the mossy, foresty swampland it is now. This is the big idea behind Pleistocene Park. Bring back the ancient Russian tree-stomping snowblowers. Or, as Pleistocene Park's Nikita Zimov puts it, Give me a hundred mammoths and give me enough money to feed them. You will not recognize this place next time you're here. Give me a hundred mammoths and I guarantee you won't recognize this couch. Of course, We'll need more than that to save Earth. Because everyone loves the story of the plucky little mammoth who shoveled out Siberia all by himself. But that is just a children's story. Siberia is big. And according to the number crunchers in the Couch Report Snow Shoveling Department, ah. mammoth, mammoth plus mammoth, mammoth, mammoth minus mammoth. mammoth. Look, it's a lot of mammoths. All of this underscores how important a single species can be in keeping an ecosystem in balance. In some cases, you lose one and the entire system goes nuts, which 
Unfortunately, is where we are today. New candidates for de-extinction are popping up all the time. The U.S. declared nearly two dozen species extinct in September, including the ivory-billed woodpecker and the Bachman's warbler. If we don't make big moves soon to improve conservation and fight climate change, there'll be more. Someday, we might be the more. A UN report says that about one million plant and animal species are already threatened with extinction, many within decades. The Asian elephant, the same animal that could be used to bring back the mammoth, is endangered which presents a preposterous dynamic. We may be able to bring back one elephant-like species when we can't even keep the elephants we've got alive. The idea of getting a do-over every time we screw up and lose a species is really appealing because it says hope's not lost. But it doesn't mean the wave of mass extinction now threatening the planet has a cheap and easy techno fix. There isn't one. We either do the hard work necessary to keep temperatures in their normal range and sustain life on this planet or we don't. Mass extinction is raging through this planet like a T-Rex down Main Street. The mammoth might be a fuzzy, cute little fella whose pending reappearance makes you think that maybe we've got this whole thing under control. But guess what? We don't. And if we don't chill out, the mammoths and the dodos and the ibexes and the bulldog rats aren't gonna save us. Especially not the bulldog rats.